Oh, was that an Enigma machine? It is. everyone and welcome back. We are today at Fairport Harbor in Northeast Ohio. You can see Lake Erie right there behind us. This is the closest we're going to get to an ocean today, but <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we're, out, we're out here uh, to introduce a video to you. Now, I don't think we're probably the only content creators that every now and then will shoot video and then never release it, but that's what happened. Yeah. We shot this video in Hatteras, North Carolina, about a year and a half to two years ago, and we just never made it to the <laughs> to, to the YouTube channel. <laughs> until now, until now that is. So we're gonna bring you today kind of a throwback video um, to an interesting museum that we found there. It's called the Graveyard of the Atlantic Museum, and it really is fascinating. Yeah, we, we went there to see the um, Wright Brothers Memorial and, and when, when we were there we found this other museum and yeah. we thought this this is interesting and yeah. and when we started going when we were inside we thought this is this is this has stuff That's we didn't amazing. even know amazing it was <laughs> truly amazing know. so right now we're gonna go back to back in time I can't quite remember 2022 I think and we're gonna go to the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum so take a look Situated almost at the very tip of Hatteras Island in North Carolina is the Graveyard of the Atlantic Museum. We had no idea what we would find when we went there that day, but it turned out to be one of the most interesting museums we have ever visited. The museum is located at 59,200 Museum Drive in Hatteras, North Carolina, and entrance is free, although they are very happy to accept donations. Inside is a treasure trove of maritime memorabilia, stories of pirates, and most interesting to us, harrowing stories of German U-boats sinking unsuspecting ships during World War II. Situated prominently in the lobby is a Fresnel lens. Let's listen as the docent tells us its history. Well, it's the original 1854 Cape Hatteras Fresnel lens. Um, it was taken down in 1949, I believe, because someone vandalized it. They like shot out a few of the prisms. Sad. Um, and wow. It's, it's been here since 2005. Uh huh. So it was the part that doesn't have anything in it. Did it have lenses in it as well, or yeah, well, was it just glass? It's it just was just the, the bottom the and the top prisms. that had. The, yeah, so all the individual prisms, they would have been lining all the up and down ones too. And one of, they would have had like kind of like bullseye looking. And so that's what oh, made oh, it kind sure. of to flash brighter. Very cool. So in 1878, a network of stations was established along the North Carolina coast called Life Saving Stations. And this is one of their boats. It was the men that manned the Kitty Hawk station that helped Orville and Wilbur Wright when they were working on getting their first airplane in the air and up and running. This is one of their boats, and it says that there were at least 18 of these stations established around uh, just, on, just on Cape Hatteras. In 1915, the Life Saving Service and the revenue cutter service, which I assume was to make sure that proper revenues were being collected on on imports, uh, those were merged into the Coast Guard. As we know it today. Yep. So thank you, Coast Guard. This beautiful flag has 35 stars on it. I take it back, it actually has 34 stars and was, is one of only three silk naval flags known to exist. It was flown over the ship Monticello. Very cool. In 1861. Yeah. And it has been restored beautifully. Oh, was that an Enigma machine? It is. Look, 
This is an Enigma machine. Yeah, it's from because four German submarines sank off of Cape Hatteras. Operation Drumbeat. December 7th, 1941, the Japanese surprise attack of Pearl Harbor thrust the United States in the Second World War. Shortly thereafter, Nazi Germany declared war on the United States. A campaign called Operation Drumbeat. Admiral Donitz, the German army unleashed attack submarines known as U-boats against shipping routes on the east coast of North America. Then U-boats first arrived. Uh, when, they, when they first arrived, they found in America unprepared for war. There are no coastal blackouts. Shipping followed normal routes, and merchantmen frequently signaled their position by radio. Wow. During the first six months of World War II, North Carolina steered the British District closer to war than most of our overseas troops as U boat raiders operated un unabated along our shores. The third district waters are home to four U boat grave sites, resting in peaceful silence in the graveyard of the Atlantic. And there's proof. Whoa, that is a Nazi flag. Wow. Guiding expedition. A grave of U-85. Oh, this is their restoration room, apparently. And there's another enigma right there. Looks like it's being restored. This is a very cool museum. Way more than I expected. So, this placard is telling us that in 18, March of 1842, the U-71, here on the coast of North Carolina, torpedoed the American tanker Dixie Arrow. And in less than a minute, the tanker's cargo of 86,000 barrels of crude oil ignited and engulfed the ship in flames. The USS Tarbell arrived on scene and attacked U-71 with depth charges. U-71 escaped when the USS Tarbell broke off its attack to rescue 22 survivors from the Dixie Arrow. This is a scale model of the U-140, one of the U-boats that traversed this area. It had six officers and 56 men. It was 301 feet long and the U-boats just wreaked havoc on the coast of the Hatteras, the Outer Banks area. I had no idea. Well, I've always wondered why they were so worried about the Japanese being right near California, but here the Germans were just right, right on our coast. Right off the coast of North Carolina. I had no yeah, idea. I mean, and it, there's multiple ships that they talked about being sunk by the German U-boats, right yeah. like here along here, Cape Hatteras. Here, right along Cape Hatteras. So, wow, I had no idea. This is really an incredible museum. It was free to get in here. They just asked for donations. This is an incredible collection of not just old ship stuff, but World War II. I mean, this is very contemporary in very many ways. This is an incredible museum. I will link the see if they've got a website i'm sure they probably do i'll link all that as well as how to get here um in the description below in addition to all the interesting memorabilia from moors and pirates they also have the history of diving in here which is kind of near and dear to our hearts because we have dived in past years it's been a while and this is one of the it's a diving compressor that was used in helmet diving, if you've ever done that or seen it in movies or pictures. We were so impressed with this little museum. Um, it's way out at the end of Hatteras Island. Yeah, it's way out there. And it's well worth the drive, but it's you do have to go away. You really do. It is free. Um, yeah. It's just for a donation, which we were happy to give them. It's got so much in it and so much amazing history that we just... We had no idea. We had no idea. We yeah. really did. And, you know, I feel like we should have known it, but it, we never learned that World War II history that, that or, was there. Or if we did, it just oh, fell yeah. out of our mind by exactly. now. I don't know. Exactly. So, 
Yeah, so it's definitely worth the, worth the trip out there. If it you're is. Going to the Outer Banks area. Yeah, if you're going to Outer Banks, just keep on going and go to the very end of the Hatteras um, Island and absolutely. and you'll find it there. Yeah. And so. there's gorgeous beaches out there too. Yeah. So it was a good stop. It was a good stop. I'd go back and uh, to Hatteras and the Outer Banks. It was very cool. Yeah. One of the things that we really like about RV travel is that you can find these unexpected places along the way that you would never otherwise visit. And But it's really cool because they're really neat places. Yeah, there will be a lot more unexpected places that we'll be stopping and showing you in the coming months. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video and ring the bell to get notified. You bet. And until next time, Restless Friends, you take care. Bye.